How then engineering fans, welcome back to another video. So this week's video will probably contain a couple of jobs just because I don't think any of the jobs that I've got to do are particularly that interesting. So I'll put a couple of jobs in one video, I think, throughout the week. So the first job is not very fun, but it's nice and easy, straightforward for a Monday morning. So I've got the bristles to change on this bucket brush. So it's a bit stinky because it's used on a poultry farm for sweeping the chicken sheds out. So it's full of uh, chicken muck, dried in chicken muck in there, but because it's dry, it's all right, I can deal with it. So I'll knock this bearing off, undo them bolts, knock the bearing off. Sometimes they can be seized on and the price of a new bearing, they're not really worth the time getting them off. If they're slightly awkward, you just cut them off and put a new one on. It probably wants a new one anyway, because it won't have been greased. Since last time it had new bristles, I wouldn't have thought. So I've given it a few hits on the back of there, that bearing, and it's not going to come off, so we'll just cut it off and then put a new one on. So there's just the inner race to cut off now. Now some people slip through them with a slitting disc. Some people grind them away. I prefer to uh, cut them off with the gas. I think it's quite fun as well cutting them off with the gas. And you uh, you don't damage the shaft then. If you cut them through with a the grinder, you end up usually slitting into the shaft a little bit. But if you're gentle with a gas torch, you can chop them off. So that's that bearing off. Um, I'm a bit out of practice, I haven't done, cut one off for a long time, but you know, just take a slither off. And it doesn't melt into the shaft because there's no heat, but 
no heat input into the shaft and it only melts away the top surface. Unless you get too carried away, then you can end up digging in. Oh yeah, no, that's come off there with no damage. Apart from a little bit there where I've dug in with a chisel, but I'll just file the top of that off. So yeah, no, that's that off. So that's all them off, there's uh, plastic ones and there's wire ones. The wire ones take a bit more getting off because they're quite tight so I've, I've just slipped through some of them and twisted them off. So it's going to need a bit of a welding repair on this end, there's a bit missing and it's cracked across there. So I think what I'll do is I'll give it a wash off, see if there's any cracks anywhere else on it. So I've given it a wash off and I can see there's quite a few cracks on it now. Just they're not made strong enough, they, use, they always crack in there. And then there's a bit missing out of this end, so I'm just going to weld that bit in. Just to brace that up across there. Well, I'll get the die grinder out and I'll dig into them old wells a bit with the die grinder and then just weld over them. And then that should do. Next time the bristles are worn out, it'll probably want a new rotor. So I've got that built, welded in there now. It's not the nicest of repairs by any means, but it'll hold it together. Okay, by the time that's broken, the rest of it will have dropped to bits. So I've a few extra welds I've put on. It's not very nice to weld because it's you can't get in to grind the paint off and it's sort of the paint is in the gap. But you can see from new, it's only been welded. There's only a bit of weld there. Nothing on that side, nothing on there. Next weld is down there, so that's all it has. Holding them rings on, and then they're only welded. Well, that's not welded under there. It's only welded at one side, so there's hardly any weld that holds them together. There's no point me doing a really good repair on this end when the rest of it is just made like that. So that'll do it. That'll do it until the rest drops in bits. So that's all the bristles on now, but I ordered exactly the same amount of bristles to go back on as what came off, but I've had to put two of the old ones back on to make, to make them tight. So I can't turn them by hand now. So the new ones, whether they're slightly thinner, I don't know, but yeah, I had to put two extras on.
So that's that job done. New bearing on that end. And this end it just goes into a square. There's like a square on the end of the motor. And then the end of the rotor is box section. And it just slides over the square. And that's what it drives off. So if you've never seen one of these work before, it's actually upside down at the moment. And they hook onto like the top of the bucket. And then as your bristles go around, it sweeps everything into your bucket on the front of your telehandler. I'll, uh, I'll put a picture in if, I've, if I can find one. Yeah, that's that job done. So on to the next job now. So if you watched last week's video where I was putting the brackets on the 4-in-1 JCB bucket to fit on the 4CX, this is a job sort of continuing on from that. This is the reason why they wanted the quick hitch putting on the 4CX. So this is a, it's designed for picking up electric poles. So that drawer at the front opens up, you pick the electric pole up and it's all on a turntable. So you pick it up, it turns it upright and it lifts it over the top of the cab on the digger, you drive it to wherever you need it and then you lower it back down again and then plonk it in the hole and you can see it's been, originally it's just been pinned straight onto the front of the loader so if you want to change implements you've had to knock the pins out so that's why they want the quick hitch putting on. So what I've got to do now is alter the brackets on here to fit onto the quick hitch. The customer has bought the brackets off the manufacturer already to fit on here with the right geometry on so all I've got to do is take these off and then weld the new ones on. All right, so I've got it tipped up now, so it's easy for me to blast down there. I just noticed it doesn't look particularly very well made, this thing. There's a lot of undercut and not very nice looking welds on it. So I've decided to shift it outside to gouge them off so I'm not covering everything in the metal dust and sparks. Nice, right, so that's one side off. Nearly, nearly textbook there, look. Dug a bit deep in some places, but it's, it was real difficult reaching into the middle to gouge it away. So I think what I'm going to do with the other side is I'm going to chop them off first with the gas. Just cut straight down there and then use the um, RK gouger to, to like wash the remaining weld away.
That's that's then removed. I think it probably was quicker just doing it with the uh, RK rather than chopping them off first. So I've washed some of some of that away. So they just want grinding up now. But I think I'll call that a day for now. It's uh, starting to get dark. So I didn't get started on the brush till well, sort of late morning, like eleven o'clock, half eleven. So that's like an afternoon's work, pretty much. So uh, I'll get packed up now and go and have my tea. Right, so that's them off and ground down. You see it's been altered before, because where it's been gouged in to before, it's full of red paint. So obviously there's been some other brackets on there that have chopped them off and welded them other bits on. But there's a lot of porosity about. So these are the brackets that the customer's got from the manufacturer to go onto there. So we'll offer them up now, see how they fit. And then there's that box section to go from one to the other. And there'll also be a stop to weld on as well because there's no stop on these brackets. So that's that bracket sat on, but spot the problem with this one. So I'm gonna have to chop across there. I'm gonna have to chop that bit off on this bracket. Right, so that's them brackets tacked on, squared up, box section through. So I can weld them on now. So I've got them brackets welded on now. What I need to do now is just, I need to weld some stops onto there. So I've used a straight edge from like the bottom side of that hole to 30 mil off there. That's where the stop should be, I think. So if I weld them on there and put maybe a wedge in the back of it, that should do that job. So that's the stops welded on as well, both sides. So I'll turn it back the right way up now and then there's just that top bit to weld down and then finish welding around that box section and that's them on. Now 
that's the brackets all sorted. Maybe wanted some caps welding on the end of them box section, but everything's welded up on there now. So there's one other job to do on this. So the front it has this jaw and the bar is bent that joins joins them together. So it says when they're trying to pick up a pole sometimes, I'll pull them out of the ground because it's bent. It doesn't nip the pole properly. So I'm going to chop that out and put a new bit of 50 mil bar through there. And I'll have to make some new washers as well. So we want six of these rings cutting out now, so I've got some plate on there that I'll cut them out with that. I just need to convert it from gas cutting mode back into plasma mode. So that's them plasma out, they fit on there nice. So we'll put that bar through the legs and then we'll weld these on.
So that's that shaft welded in now. Got them washers welded on. I have also cut out some end plates for these box section. I welded them round as well, so that's all sealed up now. So what I think I'll do now is just try it on the machine, make sure my stops are right. And if it fits, then I'll chuck some red oxide at it. Right, so it's on and it fits, but they're a little bit tight at the locking pins. You have to arrive on the lever to get it to, to come out. So I'll just diagram a little bit out of them holes on the brackets, but it's on and it fits and that's good. Right, I've given that a quick spray over the red oxide. So that's that job done. So this has only just come in this morning and I need it for tomorrow. So I need to get it sorted. So this is, it's, it's a drive roller out of a conveyor. It's something to do with potatoes, moving potatoes, but I'm not quite sure what machine it's out of. But anyway, you can see the end has snapped and the shaft has snapped and it's you know, it's broken that end out. And then this is the roller that they've had made as a spare, but now when they've come to use it, they've realized it's too long to start off. You can see how much longer it is. The shaft diameter is the wrong size and where the bearings go is wrong. Well, there's a keyway in this end as well. So there's a keyway in that end. They've had to chop this end off the old one to get it out, but that's what it's supposed to look like. And that's what that one looks like. Also, this end diameter is wrong and it's just wrong altogether. So the reason these rollers are made like this is because they're a bigger diameter in the middle than they are on the outsides. So then it tracks the belt, you know, it keeps the belt tracked into the middle. And it probably would be easier for me to start from scratch and make a, make a new one, but I don't have the materials in stock. I don't have the shaft. Well, I don't have anything in stock. So what I'm going to do, I think, just to get them up and running, is alter this one. Right, so that's all them cut off. They didn't actually take that much cutting off. They were only sort of tack welded on here. Once I'd got them cut off, they were only, you know, just tack welded on there, really. So, now what I need to do now is chop this end down small enough so it'll fit through the centre, like the centre bar of my lathe. So I'll probably just, you know, just gas round there. I don't want to get too close to the shaft, though. So I've just measured the centre bar on my lathe and it's three inch. So as long as I chop that down to less than three inch, and then I can put it in the lathe and I can hold it by this bit then. And it has a centre in this end. So I can put my tailstock in there and then I'll chop this end down the same. And then I can machine this end to size, to the same as that. And then turn it round and then do the same with this end.
Right, so that's either end chopped off. I've just given them a clean up with a grinder just to clean off like the flame cut um, edge because it's quite hard sometimes and lathe tools don't always like it. So what I could do with doing now is just tacking this end back on and then getting a measurement from the step on that shaft to the step on this end and then uh, transfer their measurements onto this shaft. I've got a square set up against the step on the end of that shaft and then same at this side and then when I measure across from there it measures at 8770 so that's the measurement I need to put onto the other roller. I think I'll just use these as a reference point so I'll measure that down from there to there take that off the 8770 um, Divide it by two, well, I suppose it depends whether they're equal either either side. Have to check that. So they're near enough equal. Not far off, near enough. So what I'll do is I'll yeah, measure that, take that off the 8770 and then divide that by two. And then that will give me the distance from there to where I need the step to be on this shaft. So I'll have to machine these down. It's not ideal with having a weld around there where you know where the bearing's gonna go. But it should get them going. It'll get them up and running. And then I'll make one from scratch once I've got this one sorted. Right, so that's that end done, turned down to 30mm, put a chamfer on there. So I'll turn it round now and do the same on the other end. The other end might be a bit more tricky because it would be stuck out a lot more. The tail stop nearly have to be right at the end. That's uh, that wasn't that was alright to do. So I'm really struggling with this end, it's just chattering like hell when I try and machine it. Because it's such a far way, such a way out I think. I don't I don't have a steady. So what I think I'm gonna do, the other end machined alright, this end machined alright, but it wasn't sticking out as far. So what I think I'm gonna do, this end ring, the others have all been welded round on both sides. But this one has only been welded round on one side. So it won't take much doing if I just grind that weld, grind that weld off, then either take that disc off or slide it up to there, and then I can get that much more extra into the lathe, that much more extra in. So then I'll be machining sort of you know, nearer rather than so far out. I'm hoping, hoping that might work. So I'll try that plate that. off. Didn't really take much getting off to be fair. So now I can get all that in the lathe rather than just that so hopefully that'll make a difference so i've got that end machine down it was pretty horrible to do because it was chattery but i've smoothed it off with emery tape and it's, it's all right now it's good so that fits on there nice so so that keyway needs extending now.
So that's the new keyway cut. I decided to put a new one rather than try and follow the old one. It was going to take a bit too much getting lined up again, so I just thought it'd be quicker and easier just to cut a new one. I want some circles cutting out to replace them. So 146mm OD and then 40mm ID. So uh, that's them cut out, cut quality on them is pretty nice, that bit there is just where the lead in and lead out was, um, just could have been half a mil bigger, they're a little bit tight, so I'll just have to die grind a little bit out, yeah, almost fit, so yeah I'll die grind a bit of them out and then can weld them on, no I'll weld that one back on and then weld them on. So they're ready to weld round now, but I'm just going to give them a little bit of a warm up first. I just, I always find when you weld stuff on shafts, they can often snap where the weld is. So just for a bit of peace of mind, I'm going to give it a bit of preheat before I do any welding. Right on this old one, you can see where the shaft has snapped in there. It snapped where the weld has been. Right, so that is that roller finished. So it, it probably would have been easier to make a new one from scratch, but like I said, I didn't have the materials and I need it for tomorrow. So sometimes you just, you've got to do what you've got to do to get the job done. You're not my dog, Dexter. Hey, you're not my dog. <laughs>